An interesting problem I thought of was this. What kind of curve would be made if you got the infinite set of all lines perpendicular to every tangent line to a parabola at the intersecting point? In much simpler words, if you got the set of all normals on a parabola, what kind of curve would be made? Try thinking about the problem for a moment. Let's try making a haphazard guess and hope that it works. To narrow down the problem for a bit, let's consider y equals minus x squared as our parabola, and consider only the x values left of the y-axis, or the negative part. In solving for the mystery curve, my first initial guess, which is to an extent plausible, was that the defined curve would be just a copy of the parabola rotated 90 degrees counterclockwise. This would be x equals y squared, with y being less than 0. After all, at 0, 0, the two tangents are perpendicular to each other, general shape is similar to what the lines would make, and all tangents for x equals y squared are perpendicular to what we would have on our original curve. However, this guess immediately breaks down if you plug in some points. For example, at negative 1, negative 1, the normal is y equals minus 1 half times x plus 1 minus 1. Just by graphing, we can see that this line is not tangent, let alone intersects our guess. That means that we actually have to use our brains to find the curve. Oh no! For actually solving this question, I want to first explore working with sets of lines and carefully going through a different representation of curves before approaching the problem. Let's think of a new system for defining curves, where instead of defining them by points, aka by the parametrically defined set of points t, f of t, with t being in the reals for functions, or just general parameters, we use collections of lines. But wait, does this even work? By that, is it even possible to define a nonlinear curve with lines? Well, not really. If the curve is never going straight at any point, as in changing at a constant value for a set interval which is not zero, then we can't use straight objects to create something which is never straight at any point. But let's at least give it a try. Say we start with a simple polynomial, like y equals x squared. We can try making a crude version of the curve by connecting all the lattice points on 0, 0, 1, 1, 2, 4, and so on. This way, we can connect each point to the next, making multiple lines to create a very simple and crude looking parabola. Going further, we can start adding more points in between the existing ones and make more lines. Our model starts becoming closer and closer to the actual parabola. See where this is going? Calculus in this way tells us something different. With a finite number of lines, we can never get a perfect nonlinear curve. But if you get more and more lines up to infinity, the set of lines will eventually represent a curve. We stated, if you get every line which is tangent to a parabola and graph them, the lines can be used to represent the parabola itself. In fact, if you just got a random curve and gathered all the lines tangent to it, we could define this curve by using that set of lines, using derivatives at each point and the fact that the line crosses that same point. Turning back to our parabola, if you add y equals x squared, we could redefine this curve as the set p, which is y equals 2t times x minus t plus t squared, with t being in the reals. We can select t from the set of real numbers and get the line which is tangent to the parabola at t comma t squared. In fact, we can use this logic to define any continuous differentiable function. Set s equals y equals f prime t times x minus t plus ft with t being the reals. Expanding the scope, if you're given any parametric equation, we can easily get the derivative and the set of lines which define the curve. If you are given an infinite set of lines, then could you get a curve which is defined by that set? Well, if you are given a set of lines which are neatly organized into the aforementioned y equals f prime t x minus t plus f t form, it is indeed relatively easy to find a curve. However, we are not able to define a curve with all sets of lines. If we had, for example, y equals t with t being in the reals, we'd have a set of all horizontal lines. Admittedly, it would be very hard to get a curve which is tangent to every line in this set. 
But again, that's sort of an outlier since it's similar to asking what curve is defined by the set of points t comma negative one to the t to power, with t being the ends. However, that doesn't mean that this process is quite easy. Consider the following. Which curve corresponds to the set of lines y equals 3 over 2 times t x minus half of t cubed, with t being in the reals? It takes quite some time to calculate the corresponding curve in point form, which is t squared comma t cubed. It gets even worse for some complex looking parametric points. Clearly, this is not an efficient way of finding the matching curve. To make a better method for finding the point representation of the curve, we have to turn back to getting from points to lines. Can you recall how to get from t, ft to a line representation of fx? Well, the formula is y equals f prime t times x minus t plus ft. But what's the thought process behind this? The formula is derived from two facts, the original point and the derivative at that point. However, the act of finding the derivative is the key part. Take this. As the foundations of calculus tells us, to find the derivative, we, have, we get two points, the original and one very close by, and make the other one get very, very, very close to the point we are concerned about. The limit of the slope, of course, is the derivative, but more importantly, the limit of the line is the tangent line. In other words, we use two points and the limit process to get a line. We can do the inverse with our lines. We get two lines and make one get very, very, very close to the other to get a point. The limit of the intersecting point is going to be the point representation of the curve. Let's try this process with the example given before. y equals 3 over 2t times x minus half of t cubed with t being in the reals. We get t squared comma t cubed for our curve. Nice. Let's go back to the parabola problem and apply the limit process there. Returning back to our problem, using y equals minus x squared for the parabola, let's first get the set of normals. y equals 1 over 2t times x minus t minus t squared with t being in the reals. We can substitute t plus h for t for the second line and solve algebraically for x and y in terms of t and h. By putting limit h close to 0 on the results, we end up with x equals negative 4t cubed and y equals negative 3t squared minus half, one half. Graphing this parametrically defined pair on a graphing calculator easily shows that the curve is tangent to any normal. Negative 4 times t cubed comma negative 3t squared minus one half turns out to be our mystery curve. At first glance, it's seemingly unrelated to y equals negative x squared and quite different from our first guess of another parabola. Thus, in my opinion, it's pretty cool that this curve is the same one as the set of lines we started off with. In fact, we can get any, or most since some don't work, function fx and do this process. Let's find the parametric definitions for these normal to tangent curves.
even if you plug in some functions, the results aren't that cool to be honest. For the ending, I'll still show the results for some common functions.